Tom Larson writes in the email uh, subject line says trans boxer message. Garage logic is just like all social media lies, lies, lies. I bet you guys will not acknowledge this or apologize. He's referring to uh, what the news we had Thursday when we uh, strongly suggested that boxer Imane Khalif, who knocked uh, the knocked the Italian kid for a loop, did knock her out, but hurt her. We uh, we were following news reports that said that Amin uh, Amin Khalif was a male. And there remains to this day conflicting reports. And uh, Tom, I will tell you that when we were, when I was discussing the probability of this person being a male, I was, I did not get that off any social media site. I was following conventional news gatherers who were printing that. Now, since then, I have seen that this has grown into a controversy and that this uh, person, is apparently a female with a Y chromosome, huh. and it's a rare, it's a rare situation. I have also seen, but I saw it on social media, so I discounted. I also saw someone who was swearing that he had some inside information that this, in fact, was a trans. So uh, uh, I don't know where a Caliph still stands in the uh, fighting competition, but good luck to her. Sure. Good she luck to her. Good she's, luck. Gu- she's guaranteed uh, one of the medals at this point. She won again her All last right. match. So, and she has come out and announced to everybody that she is was born a female and will remain a female. A female. Yeah, that's her quote. I will remain. Yeah. A female. yeah. She apparently failed to meet the criteria to compete as a woman in the 2023 World Championships because of the. The chromosomes. The blood work that revealed information that that suggested the officials that she may not have been complete with her lady parts. Ah. Right? That led to several false reports that she was transgender. So I guess the general news gatherers can be blamed for that mistake as much as the social media people. After she defeated... uh, uh, Hungarian boxer Anna Luka Hamori in the quarterfinals to clinch at least a bronze. Uh, Khalif made a strong statement. I want to tell the entire world that I am a female and I will remain a female. The initial ruling from the International Boxing Association has also come under question, and the International Olympic Committee banned the organization from overseeing boxing at the Olympics. Uh, Thomas Back, IOC president, said that both Khalif and Lin Yu Ting, another boxer disqualified by the AB- IBA, are in fact women. We have two boxers who were born as women, who have been raised as women, who have a passport as a woman, and who also have competed for many years as a woman, Box said. Uh, Khalif still has a chance again at the Olympics, facing a semifinal match against Thailand's Janjame Swanafeng on the 6th of August with a trip to the gold medal match on the line. Uh, both losing fighters will receive bronze. Uh, if I have, I, no, I almost issued a non apology apology. I am sorry to Imane Khalif. Apparently, you are a woman through and through. Ah. And who was the um, initial email writer? Was it Tom? Yeah, I hope that satisfies him. I don't. I don't care if it does or not. Well, I do. I, I like <laughs> that he engaged and he got a hold of us and spent some time with the show. And I hope that. I hope that makes him feel better. Oh, you know, right, Ken, Kenny, you're right. That's a good charitable oh, way to look okay. at it. Yeah, I love when people engage with us, yeah. and you, like when you used to do the radio show. People that disagreed with you on the phone always got sent to the front of the line. That's why this guy was first today. Yeah, that's one of the great things about this show. Now, on to Walls. Uh, The pick is is imminent. The VP pick is imminent. We don't know if it's Walls or not. I I continue to be uh, absolutely puzzled by the fact that it could even be Walls. 
Uh, are you are you fading on that? The, no, you I'm think more puzzled than ever. Hmm. I'm beginning to fade that he's not the choice. But here's what happens because we li- you're, you, you, here's what happens because we live in a society that has become two tribes. Okay. You got the left society and you got the right society. And if I say something that irritates the left society, all they have to do is point to Trump to say, who are you kidding? So if you, if you take a look at walls and say he's incompetent, uh, the, the tribe will say, yeah, but look who's, look who you have running the right side. Look who you have running. Mm -hmm. So you, you really can't win. So I just, and no one believes me when I'm, I, I'm not I'm not campaigning against walls because I favor Trump. I'm I'm campaigning against walls because I think it's important for a country that used to be a hell of a country to have some standards and and we don't have them in this race. There are no standards. But the way the local people have covered Trump, I, I'm sorry, walls is mind boggling to me. Uh the Star Tribune has a big piece today on what kind of pop he likes, and, <laughs> and and that's something I really needed to know too. I've been wondering. Wondering the largest state uh, newspaper, the Star Tribune, uh, has not been in any sense critical of him, or even pointed out the fact that it's a very real probability that he has created a financial nightmare. Not only is he overseeing fraud after fraud after fraud, just as importantly, the people he appointed in the various departments that oversaw the various frauds have never been held accountable. And the woman he placed in charge of the Department of Education, which oversee the food fraud scandal, oversaw the food fraud scandal, conveniently enough, left the job with no recrimination whatsoever, Heather Mueller, and then came in through another door and got a very tasty state contract for her new gig to have some sort of educational uh, mm-hmm. counseling in prisons. She left when the bleep hit the fan on the food fraud. And there's been other frauds. There's the $18 billion surplus that was blown. And what that means, taxpayers, is we have to come up, whatever the budget is from here on out, We also have to come up with an additional $18 billion in revenue because the $18 billion that he blew will go on as a spending expense in perpetuity. That just got added on to what we already spend. So we're now spending the the $18 billion every biennium more than we were spending. He also signed off on a $1 billion state office building that was unneeded. It's on and on and on and on. He he blew the whole George Floyd weekend with his reluctance to call in the National Guard. And Minneapolis burned to the tune of $500 million in damages. A police precinct was destroyed, which has yet to be resolved because the underlings to Walls, the characters who run Minneapolis, are just as incompetent as he is. This is not a good situation, but all we get, all we get is the folksiness. Oh, he wears these fishing shirts and he can stand around a a, a, a boat launch and guide a trailer into the water and he <laughs> likes Diet Mountain Dew and he uh, and it, it would it. be like if sports writers covered uh who's the quarterback they just drafted the he was tearing up training camp JJ McCarthy JJ McCarthy who's really looking good in training camp let's say he wasn't looking good let's say he threw he has thrown now 12 consecutive interceptions each one equals fraud 12 <laughs> and it would be like if the sports writers wrote and told you what his favorite movie is what kind of uh Shirts he likes to wear. Some what what is do that? What his favorite car <laughs> is and his favorite TV. What character would you be if they made a movie? It, it, and they ignored the fact that as a quarterback, he was a bust. He it would be the, the same thing. On it. Huh? Uh, Ro- Rochelle Olson, by the way, wrote that press release that's in today's uh, Star Tribune. What a great headline, too. Dog parks, diet do, and a vintage four-wheel drive. And it's the biggest puff piece I have ever read in my life. So you addressed all these things, all these reasons why we should question walls. 
why do the people of Minnesota love him so? Why? Because he's one of us. Is that the bit? I know well, he's, he's, he's from Nebraska. He's from Nebraska. That's why he's not one of us. I, I don't know that the people of Minnesota love him. I think the people of Minnesota are just apathetic. They There's a don't give a listener of ours <laughs> sent me a video. Uh, this guy should be Kamala Harris's VP pick, and it's about walls. And uh, this listener directed me to the comments on mm -hmm. this video. Mm -hmm. They're all pro walls. Mm -hmm. They love him. They buy the image. Okay, Minnesota I, loves him. They either have so much money that they will not be punished with tax consequences to fill the hole he's dug, or they don't have any money at all, and they have no ore in the water. It's the Here. middle class that Walls claims to represent that will be hurt the most by the financial disaster he's creating. Some comments. Minnesotan here. Governor Walls is the real deal. Not going to lie. Don't want to share him with the rest of the country. <laughs> Another one. Tim Walls would surgically dismantle J.D. Vance on a debate stage. I'd pay to see that. I, I doubt that would happen, by the way. As a Minnesotan, we have voted consecutively every presidential election for Democrats for more than decades in any other state. If it's up to us, social democracy will always prevail and Trump will never win here. You know, and that's fine, but it just goes on and on and on with the positive walls comments. Here's Channel 9's story today. The best big j dad jokes about Wall. Okay. Oh, come on. Let's hear a couple. Come on. <laughs> uh, that, that's just deflection to all the facts you Tim just Wall's, brought up. Though. Tim Wall's VP interview was going to start with him being asked about national security and the tax code to end up, end up with him wearing a headlamp up in the attic fixing some old wiring. What? Huh? I don't get it. Tim Wall saves the box because it'll come in handy for something big dad. What? These are from the public, I guess. Oh, then I don't trust them as being funny. You got to be a professional dad in order to do dad jokes. Kamala in the Oval Office. General, what do you think our response time should be? Wall stands up, walks over to the window, distracting everyone. General, Mr. Vice President, Walls, with a slow shake of his head, says, you know, we really needed this rain. <laughs> That's okay. hilarious. Wow. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did need the rain. Here's the reformer, <laughs> the Minnesota reformer. Are these still dad jokes? Uh, how Minnesota changed during Tim Walls' tenure. Now, Minnesota Governor Walls has hit the talk show circuit. Well, he's only hit the friendly talk show circuit. Just as here in the Twin Cities, he'll only do one radio station, right. the old neighbor. Right. Uh, Minnesota Governor Tim Walls has hit the talk show circuit and is currently on the short list to be Kamala's running mate. Uh, the sudden intense speculation about Walls has sparked interest in his gubernatorial record, which began in 2019. One way to illuminate that record is to explore how Minnesota has changed since the dawn of the Walls administration. And so what the reformer did was compile a series of charts showing Minnesota's trajectory on a variety of metrics. Yeah, just go to the first one, Joe. And then go to the very last paragraph, how they explain it away. First, explain the graph. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this in haste, trying to explain it. I was just the, handed this the piece. Population growth slows dramatically after Walls takes office. Is I that mean, a good drops... thing? Are they offering that as a good thing? No, no. They're offering it as a bit of truth. Mm -hmm. Or at least, I guess, I didn't interpret it as a good thing. I interpreted it as a bad thing. But then you drop down and read the last paragraph on how they explain it. One reason Minnesota population's population growth has slowed is that more people are now moving away from the state than into it, a trend that's apparent in many other cold northern states. Really? Oh. That's the reason? Oh. Really? Come on. Uh, then they mentioned mortality rate. That doesn't have any really significance. Uh, earnings rise in 2022 
well, they dropped significantly after he took the office, and then now they're working their way back up. Uh, Minnesota's violent, violent crime rate yeah. is a positive measure, including homicide, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault, shot up precipitously starting in 2020. The causes aren't entirely clear. But the <laughs> past, well, I think I know what they are. Yeah. But the pandemic seems to have led to a rise in antisocial behavior while the police killing of George Floyd and the rioting and unrest drove subsequent upheavals in policing. Total violent crime in the U.S. did not follow a similar trend. All right. Violent so, crime in Minnesota remains well below the U.S. average. Well, I don't think Walls can take credit for that. Can but he? it's way, way, way above where it was when he took office. Uh, so it's it's awful. The education uh, edge or gap is awful. Math, reading. Minnesota has awful. slipped in the national rankings of education quality. Civic engagement is key to a functioning democracy, and Minnesota consistently ranks high in those measures. Uh, I guess they're using voter participation rate as an example of civic engagement. What about declining public school enrollment? While carbon dioxide emissions fell across the board during the pandemic, well, no one was driving around. Minnesota's drop was slightly steeper than the national average. The Walls administration has made green energy a priority, mandating, among other things, a transition to 100% carbon-free energy by 2040, which is not doable, not realistic, and will not happen. But what's interesting about that graph is it's almost dead on the same as the U.S. rate. I thought that was interesting, just for no reason whatsoever. But my point in all of this, the Rochelle Olson piece and this reformer piece, everywhere else you look, is that the Minnesota press is doing everything to big up walls as him being the final solution uh, for the v vice president's chair. Well, which leaves me with the question, is it important or not important for a governor to be financially responsible? The answer here is apparently it is not important to Minnesotans. It's just not important. What other conclusion can you draw? Mm, but, this fellow couldn't get more but, pats on the back. But the comeback to that would be, but don't we have $2 billion worth of evidence that says it is important? What's the $2 billion? The migration that has left oh, the state. Oh, of course, of course. But the Star Tribune's publisher is, is tied at the waist to walls, Steve Grove, and I don't, I don't suspect that Wall or that Grove holds meetings every day and says, "Let's all be kind to Walls." I doubt that's happening. Uh, but there is a there is a a vibe in the Star Tribune that suggests to me the nations the nations the, the state's most important newspaper, the largest newspaper. There there is a, a vibe. Uh, that suggests to me that the paper is not going to ever be critical of Walls in his fiduciary behavior. It just, they're just not going to. 